Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're taking a look at everyone's favorite anion gap and explaining what the hell is it. So to begin, we need to talk about the bicarbonate buffer equation. So 99.8% of the acids that our body produces comes from carbon dioxide, which we know our cells and our tissues produce when we try to make energy. Now this carbon dioxide we need to breathe out. And so we need to take this carbon dioxide and we need to send it to our lungs from our tissues. Now we do that by throwing it into the bloodstream and we know that most of the blood is filled with water. So remember that your blood, 55% of it is plasma and 92 to 95% of that is water. So the carbon dioxide will mix with the water in our blood. Now that produces something called carbonic acid, which is H2CO3 and that's carbonic acid. And as we know, the definition of an acid is it hates itself, right? It splits itself apart to produce a hydrogen ion, so we pluck a hydrogen ion off that. What are we left with? We are left with an H, a C, two, uh, three O's, and a negative. And that's called bicarbonate. This is a reversible equation. It can go in the opposite direction. Effectively, what I'm saying is, through the processes of cellular respiration or metabolism, we make carbon dioxide and it will ultimately produce acid. Reason why I'm showing you this equation for anion gap is because when we look at acid-based disturbances, this side of the equation deals with the lung's ability to control acid-based disturbances. So your respiratory system controls carbon dioxide. If you increase the amount of carbon dioxide, you will increase the amount of hydrogen ions in your blood. Makes it more acidic. So we call this a respiratory acidosis. So if we have an increase in carbon dioxide, we can have what we call a respiratory acidosis. Now if we have a reduction in carbon dioxide, so the increase is we're retaining it, right? We're not breathing it out. So anything that will allow for us to retain carbon dioxide is gonna produce a respiratory acidosis. Anything that allows for us to breathe out too much carbon dioxide, meaning we reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in our bloodstream, so hyperventilation, for example, that can cause, if that's lower, it produces less of that. So less hydrogen ions, making it more basic or alkalinic. So this is called a respiratory alkalosis. So this is an easy one. The respiratory acidosis alkalosis simply depends on how much CO2 we're retaining or breathing out. This end of the equation, however, has to do with these two things. Now, these two things are regulated by our kidneys, not our respiratory system. And so effectively, if you have an increase in hydrogen ions or a decrease in bicarbonate, right? Because bicarbonate can mop up hydrogen ions and push the equation in this direction. So if we have an, either an increase of that or a decrease of that, so there's less of it to bind to hydrogen ions, this is what we call a metabolic, a metabolic acidosis. Now on the flip side, if we have less hydrogen ions and more bicarbonate ions, we have a metabolic alkalosis. Easy. Now the reason why we're going through this for anion gap is because we need anion gap sometimes to help us figure out what type of metabolic acidosis we have because this can happen due to a couple of reasons. Firstly, what if something happened that increased the amount of hydrogen ions in the body? Well, we're not talking about carbon dioxide causes. So we're not talking about from here pushing this way. We're talking about something else introducing too many hydrogen ions. So for example, someone has ketoacidosis. So ketoacidosis, so think about ketoacidosis. 
This can happen a number of different reasons. So ketoacidosis can be due to um, unmanaged type one diabetes, right? It can happen due to starvation. It can happen due to alcohol induced cases. Effectively, anything that pr uh, increases keto acids. Acids produce hydrogen ions. Or we can introduce it through lactic acid. So you can have a lactic acidosis. When do we produce lactic acid? We produce it when we don't have enough oxygen in the body to match the metabolic demands. So we produce lactic acid. So this happens anytime our oxygen levels are relatively low. So it could be hypoxia, it could be anemia, it could be high altitudes, it could be shock, there's a lot of things that can cause it for example. All right, it could be uh, strenuous exercise, or we could increase the hydrogen ions from uh, me the metabolism of methanol or ethanol, which I said alcohol there, um, or even like antifreeze, right? Which I think is uh, ethyl glycate, antifreeze. So they also increase hydrogen ions. So that's one way that you could produce a metabolic acidosis by increasing hydrogen ions, or we can reduce the bicarbonate. I'm gonna put this in a different color. We can reduce the bicarbonate. How do we reduce the bicarbonate? Well, we need to excrete it too much. So how do we excrete too much bicarbonate? Diarrhea. Remember that the um, pancreas produces bicarbonate to neutralize the acid in the stomach. But if you, we should reabsorb all that bicarbonate. But if you've got diarrhea, you're pooping it all out, right? So maybe through diarrhea. Maybe you've got a pancreatic fistula, which means the pancreas is actually not connected to where it should be and it just leaves the body. Pancreatic fistula. Maybe you've got a problem with the kidneys itself and you just peeing out the bicarbonate, right? So kidney failure. So any of these could reduce the bicarbonate. Now, the reason why, again, I'm highlighting this is, what if somebody comes to you, they've got a blood pH, right? They've got a blood pH of less than 7.35, which we know is an acidosis. So we go, okay, they've got acidosis, I know that. How do I know whether it's a respiratory acidosis or a metabolic? And you look at the CO2 and it's barely changed. And you go, okay, well, it's not CO2 because you'd expect the CO2 to be really high. But you have a look. You need to determine, well, how do I know whether it's a metabolic acidosis and alkalosis? You could go, oh, I'll just measure the hydrogen ions. Well, we already know it's acidic. So they're gonna be high regardless of whether that's low or that's high right? They're going to be high regardless because it's an acidosis. So how do we know whether it's from a, these acids being introduced or the base being lost? And this is when we need to do anion gap. So to understand anion gap, what we need to very quickly, and we'll put it over here, what we need to go through is if I want to measure your blood and have a look at the ions in your blood, right? The positive and negative stuff. Let's have a look here. All the positive, so the cations, let's write this down, the positive cations, right? You've got sodium, you've got a little bit of potassium, um, you've got calcium, some magnesium, you've got all these positive cations. But truly, sodium constitutes the vast majority of these cations. So you could say, okay, measuring in the extracellular fluid, sodium makes up pretty much all of it. We're gonna use sodium as a proxy for what's in our blood, right? For all the positive ions in our blood. If we then do the same for the negative stuff, there is no negative cation that is as abundant as sodium is. Uh, sorry, negative anion that is as abundant as sodium is. So effectively, what we do is we measure a couple of things. We measure chloride, we measure bicarbonate, and we add them up. And there's also the unmeasured 
anions. So effectively, if we were to take the sodium and we go, okay, I know the sodium concentration, it's 140 millimoles per litre or milli equivalents per litre. The chloride is 104 millimoles or milli equivalents per litre and the bicarbonate is 24 millimoles or milli equivalents per litre. Write this up in an equation, right? You go sodium minus the chloride plus the bicarbonate, and you might be thinking, why are we doing this equation? We're doing this because the body likes electroneutrality. If I were to effectively take all the positive things in your blood and all the negative things in your blood and add them up and then deduct them from each other, it should be zero, right? or at least it tries to be a net charge of zero. It's not gonna be the case, but it at least tries to attempt this. And so if we use sodium as the proxy, again, that's 140, and we minus it from adding 104 for chloride plus 24 for bicarbonate, that ends up being 128. So 140 minus 128, what's that give us? That gives us 12 equals 12 millimoles per litre or milli equivalents per litre. So it doesn't equal zero because there is a set of unknown anions that we can't take into consideration that equal around about 12 millimoles. So this here, this unknown is equal to around about 12 millimoles per litre. Now we do know what it is. It's mostly negative proteins. It can be other negative anions as well. But that's the what we call the normal anion gap, right? That's the normal anion gap. Now, what happened, this is somebody without any acid-base disturbance. So what happens then when somebody has a metabolic acidosis? Let's say that they had a metabolic acidosis because they're just losing free bicarbonate. They're either pooping it all out, they've got a pancreatic fistula, or the kidneys aren't working and the kidneys are just peeing it all out. What that means is the bicarbonate levels drop, right? The bicarbonate levels drop. So let's think about this. Let's rewrite this equation up here. The sodium is normal. So you've got our sodium here. That's normal at 140, right? Our chloride and our bicarbonate, I said we've lost bicarbonate. So instead of the bicarbonate being 24, let's make it 20. We've lost four millimoles per litre, either diarrhea, pancreatic fistula, or kidney failure. Here's the thing. When you lose something negative, the body wants to again try to maintain electroneutrality. He goes, I've lost too many negative things, I need to try and boost up some other negative things to make up for it. So what the body does is it increases the relative amount of chloride in your blood plasma. So the chloride might go from 104 to 108, to 108, right? So let's do the calculations. 108 plus 20 equals 128. And 140 minus 128 is 12 again, 12 millimoles per litre. And you might be thinking, wait a minute, it's exactly the same as what we saw before. Yes. So in the instance of us losing free bicarbonate, if we lose, if we lose free bicarbonate, we have a normal anion gap, but we have increased chloride, a hyperchloremia. So it's a normal anion gap with hyperchloremia. So there you go. If you're losing free bicarbonate, you end up having a normal anion gap with hyperchloremia. That's telling you it's due to these particular reasons, maybe a couple of others, but you're losing free bicarbonate. All right, now what happens if that's not the issue here, we're actually gaining acids through this mechanism. Remember this, remember an acid, let's write it as HA, hates itself, right? And will split itself apart to form a free hydrogen ion. That's what makes the solution acidic, but you're left with its conjugate base. Right? 
It's got a negative charge, it's, a, it's an anion. So anytime you produce lactic acid, this happens. Anytime you produce keto acids, this happens. Anytime you produce acid from metabolizing methanol or ethanol, for example, this happens. That's important because we are now, think about what's happening in this instance. When you've got all this free hydrogen ion floating through the body, we need to mop it up because the body wants to fix the pH change. So the bicarbonate that's in our bloodstream will go to the hydrogen and mop it up, right? This equation, it mops it up to try and go in this direction to fix our blood pH. So that means the bicarbonate disappears effectively because it's now bound up to this to form carbonic acid. So when we have the addition of acids, let's write up the equation again, let's write it here. You've got sodium minus chloride plus bicarbonate. In this instance, again, normal sodium. The bicarbonate's gone down because it's disappearing because it's binding up the hydrogen ions that are made from all these acids. So that's gonna go down. Let's ex again go from 24 to 20, right? Now, you might go, okay, I know what happens here. When the bicarbonate goes down, we wanna maintain electron neutrality so the chloride goes up. We've spoken about this. No, the chloride doesn't go up because it doesn't need to maintain electron neutrality because all of these conjugate bases have been released with their negative charge. They're maintaining electron neutrality. So there's no urgency for chloride levels to go up. So chloride remains normal-ish. So let's say at 104. So now we've got 104 plus 20. We end up having 140 minus 124. And what does that give us? It gives us an anion gap of 16 millimoles per litre. We've now got an increased anion gap. Now the normal anion gap can be anywhere between 8 to 12, generally speaking, millimoles per litre, sometimes written as milli equivalents per litre, which is probably more accurate. 8 to 12. Here we've gone too high. So now what we've got, due to an increase in acid production or exogenous acids being introduced, we have a, when we've got um, increase acid production, what we end up getting is an increased, or we could say high anion gap, high anion gap. No hyperchloremia. So, again, the whole purpose of measuring the anion gap is, deter to, is to determine the differences of metabolic acidosis. Is it due to a loss of bicarbonate or is it due to a gain in acids? If you've got the loss of bicarbonate, you will have a normal anion gap with hyperchloremia, or if it's due to an increased acid production, you're gonna have a high anion gap with no hyperchloremia. I really hope that that makes sense. If you need any other points about uh, acidosis, alkalosis, please watch my videos. I'm Dr. Mike. Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. We've got hundreds of others just like this. If you want to contact us, please do so on social media. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Dr. Mike Todorovic at D-R-M-I-K-E-T-O-D-O-R-O-V-I-C. Speak to you soon.